Good night and welcome to another edition of Sports Monday. I am Paul Lopez. As we near the end of Women's Month, we begin tonight's coverage with highlights from the 33rd Women's Cross Country Cycling Classic. 11 riders lined up at the starting line in San Ignacio. Among them were three Belizeans, including defending champion Kaya Catus, four American riders, two Mexicans, a Trinidadian and a Jamaican rider. Heading into central form is Jamaican rider Laurie Sharp setting the pace. 20 minutes later, Sharp is still in the lead, followed closely by Trinidadian rider Alexis Ramirez in second place. At this point in the race, Kaya Catus is the only Belizean rider keeping up with the main field of lead riders. The other two have fallen behind. In Kamalote Village, Sharp has displayed a great deal of endurance and stamina as she continues to lead the charge. Elias West, Elizabeth Stevenson in hot pursuit. These riders have created a gap between themselves and the other riders. They maintain their lead until mile 40 when Chase Group caught up with them, led by LA Sweat's Mia Scarletto. Mexican rider Julie Aguila launched an attack just outside of St. Matthew's Village. LA Sweat's Regina Dotti immediately rose from her seat in hot pursuit. Well, folks, that was the last the other riders would see of Aguila and Dotti. Here is the main field of riders, two minutes behind the two lead riders. Kaya Catus, the only Belizean rider still in the pack, is among this group. Heading into Belize City, it is all Dotty and Aguila. With less than half a mile to the finish line, Dotty and Aguila turned up the heat for an all-out sprint. And here is it, folks, the sprint to the finish line. Regina Dotty in first place, followed by Aguila. If you race fearful, you're never going to win. You can't race with fear. I was willing to give it all I had, and those attacks, I wanted to see what she had. So I was willing to attack and attack, attack. I know I can recover quickly, even after 70 miles. I know what my body is capable of. And so I was just trying to figure out if, if she was strong enough to keep on going, if she would attack at all. But she didn't want it, and I was there to take it. Going into it, our game plan was um, to bring it down to the line for me. Um, we quickly realized that the other team's focus was on me and our plan B was to get one of our stronger pacers down the road and you know hopefully they could they could have delivered that W and that's exactly what happened today um, when we realized we couldn't get away from them for the, the, the third place they're only three podium spots um, I launched Liz down the road for that for that third spot and she executed perfectly so I think we're very happy with first and third um, Belizeans wanted a Belizean win however we came for an LA Sweat win and that's exactly what we got today. Kaya Katus came in sixth place. And from cycling, we move into some basketball action. The San Pedro Tiger Sharks took on the Belize City Defenders on Saturday night inside the Belize City Civic Center. And the Sharks had something to prove after being defeated by the Defenders in their last match. The San Pedro Tiger Sharks are on a roll after defeating the number one seed in the BEBL, Venice Belize Hurricanes, last week inside the Civic. On Saturday night, they went up against the number two seed, the Belize City Defenders. It is safe to say that this is a new Tiger Sharks team we are seeing after also winning their game against the Defenders 104 to 70 points. The Sharks' number seven, Bobby Arthur Williams, played 37 minutes and put up an impressive 33 points. That includes three of four from the three-point line and five of 11 two-pointers. Williams also banked 14 of his 16 free-throw attempts. Francis Arana followed behind with 18 points off the bench, scoring five of his 10 two-point attempts and two of his six three-point attempts. He ended the game with 11 assists. Arana was also big on the defensive end, securing five steals for his team on Saturday night. Jihad Wright and Daniel Konarki both finished the game with 15 points each. What Wright lacked from the arc, he made up with his two-point shots and free throws. Konarki was 44% efficient from the field on Saturday night. We heard from coach Rico Black and Francis Arana following their victory. At the beginning of the season, it was very difficult to get my players together. I know we had to trans transition from San Pedro and come here and we couldn't get a Civic to work out. So it's very difficult. You know, the opening night you saw that we weren't playing, we weren't really good and then we gave away our game to the defenders the second game. But now that we were working out, you know, they gave us the court some odd, odd hours, 10 to 12 at night, but we're making a sacrifice. So we're getting, we're getting together, the team is, is believing in themselves, I'm using my, I'm letting my bench believe that 
they can play in this level. As the season goes on, we're gradually getting our chemistry together. So now we're learning to play together much better. And we're seeing the chemistry every night. We come and work out and put in the work together. And it is showing on the court now. The San Pedro Tiger Sharks are now second in the league's standing, making them the second seed up to this point in the season. Well, folks, that's all we have for you in tonight's coverage of Sports Monday. Catch you in the next one.